Sakichiro Toyoda, the son of the renowned Japanese industrialist and inventor Sakichi Toyoda, who made his fortune creating looms for weaving fabric, founded Toyota Motor in 1937. The company experienced particular success following the start of World War I, which boosted the Japanese cotton industry and caused a decline in the country's cotton and fabric industries. The Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923, the 1929 Great Depression and the 1927 Financial Panic made things worse. The earthquake, on the other hand, greatly increased the demand for automobiles. After the disaster completely destroyed the Japanese rail system, the nation started importing Ford Motor Company vehicles to be converted into buses for public transportation. Toyota Automatic Loom Works was established to produce automobiles. On September 1, 1933, construction on a manufacturing facility got underway. He had no background in auto manufacturing. He then bought automobiles from Ford, Chevrolet, and Chrysler and disassembled them in order to find models on which to base his own design. Additionally, he hired engineers from local affiliates of American automakers like GM and Japanese automakers. The Model AA, the company's first production passenger car, was introduced in 1936, and the following year, Toyota Motor was established as a separate business. But as soon as Japan entered World War II, its auto industry changed its production to support the conflict. Toyota was severely damaged by the war. Production was severely constrained, there was a shortage of materials, and one of its factories had been bombed at the end of the war. But after that, Toyota started producing the trucks. The business anticipated that Japan would have to rebuild itself. When the U.S. Army placed a sizable order for trucks needed for the Korean War in 1950, Toyota also received a significant break. Toyota increased monthly output from 650 to almost 1,000 vehicles. Toyota slowly reinvented itself, but it soon realized that in order to survive and develop over the long term, it needed to reach beyond Japan. And to do that, the automaker turned to the enormous and quickly expanding American market. The 1950s cars America is best known for its enormous automobiles, like the 1958 Ford Fairlane Skyliner and the 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air. However, the sales of compact cars were increasing, and nearly all of them were European, as noticed by Toyota executives. The business believed there was room for its own, relatively compact vehicle. In Southern California, a former Rambler dealership was converted into the Toyopit Crown Sales Office. However, Toyota's newly hired American staff foresaw the disaster and the Toyopit Crown turned out to be a failure. The Crown's design was intended to travel slowly over Japan's poor roads, which was its first flaw. However, the vehicle wasn't made for American roads, where vehicles could travel at highway speeds of 60 miles per hour and were smooth and new. In 1958, Toyota sold 287 crowns. In 1959, sales more than tripled, but the company quickly pulled the car off the market and reorganized. However, Toyota took its understanding of the American market seriously and started creating automobiles with American consumers in mind. And it succeeded. Toyota ranked third among American import brands in terms of sales by 1967. In order to create vehicles that best suited the preferences of the American market, it established a design studio called Culti Design Research in Southern California in 1973. That organization now has two offices. While the Ann Arbor office creates designs for production vehicles, the Newport Beach, California studio focuses on concept and advanced designs. The oil crisis of the middle of the 1970s, which caused customers to rush out in search of fuel-efficient vehicles, also gave Toyota a boost in the U.S. auto market. The business became the leading import brand in 1975. It was the first import brand to sell a million cars in the United States in 1986. It has continued to be one of the best-selling items ever since. Their automobiles lack the style and heritage of their American and European rivals. However, Toyota and other Japanese producers provided a unique combination of affordability and dependability. Toyota's manufacturing philosophy, 
which has gained recognition throughout the automotive industry and the larger manufacturing world from the very beginning, was essential to achieving this. Toyota emphasized the value of productivity in its manufacturing facilities. Waste and inconsistency were released from plants as much as possible. By only keeping a few parts on hand at any given time and only producing what is required, this helps to reduce wasteful parts. If the factory finds a flaw in something, it will likely waste much less time, effort, and resources. As Toyota's sales increased, consistency and dependability became its competitive advantages, and the Toyota production system may have gained the most renown globally. In order to improve their own vehicles, other automakers have actually tried to copy Toyota's methods. New United Motor Manufacturing, also known as NUMMI, is a joint manufacturing venture that General Motors established with Toyota. Even prestigious European automakers have sought Toyota's lessons. Porsche invited retired Toyota executives to the company to impart manufacturing knowledge. Are you enjoying this story? If so, remember to subscribe to our channel. However, Toyota's reputation for durability hasn't always been perfect, especially when Porsche tried to create its own cheaper Boxster car. The company experienced a recall scandal that was possibly its worst in company history starting in 2009. An off-duty California highway patrolman and his family were traveling on a highway when their Lexus suddenly accelerated collided with another vehicle, went off the road, and caught fire. Everyone inside the car died. That marked the start of a protracted drama that led to the company recalling millions of vehicles and making a settlement payment to the U.S. government of more than a billion dollars. Toyota was involved with the Takata, a Japanese supplier, faulty airbag scandal just like many other automakers. The perception that Toyota's products are unsafe, however, is not a persistent challenge the company faces today. It is not a perception that its products are unsafe. It is a perception that its products don't particularly excite people. Auto sales, at least in the United States, have recently been close to records. However, industry watchers anticipate a future decline in sales. The excitement surrounding autonomous vehicles and competition from other modes of transportation pose another threat to Toyota, and in fact to all automakers. Richly funded tech companies have backed a variety of innovative transportation ideas, such as ride-hailing and apps that let users rent electric scooters and bicycles within seconds. Although the majority of these concepts are still in their infancy, investment is being drawn to them quickly. The established automakers do not want to fall behind. To be fair to Toyota, it has made a lot of innovations throughout its long history. Toyota introduced the Prius, the industry's first hybrid vehicle in production, in 1997. One of the earliest examples of what we now refer to as a crossover was developed by Toyota as well. One of the first SUV-like vehicles built with a distinctive body frame typically used for cars, crossovers, and SUVs was the Toyota RAV4. Smaller crossovers, like the RAV4, are among the best-selling and fastest-growing segments in the U.S. new car market, which now accounts for 48% of all vehicles sold. However, Toyota is currently attempting to change from a traditional automaker to a diverse mobility business, much like its rivals. Early in 2019, the business invested $600 million in DD, a Chinese ride-hailing service that is comparable to Uber and Lyft in the U.S., approximately one year after investing $500 million in Uber. A number of the company's organizations are focused on researching new technologies. In 2015, the Toyota Research Institute was established. It researches robotics and artificial intelligence and is working to develop a crash-proof car, among other things. The venture arm of the institute, Toyota AI Ventures, oversees more than $200 million and makes investments in a variety of mobility technologies in fields like robotics, artificial intelligence, and aviation. Toyota is currently working to create vintage vehicles that are more than just useful, secure, and dependable. In a way that sets him apart from his predecessors, the current president Akio Toyota is renowned for his passion for automobiles. Akio is a driver who enjoys car racing under a fictitious name. Notably, he gave the Supra a test run by himself. 
The Supra is additionally the first automobile to be sold in the U.S. under Toyota's Garza Racing subbrand. To help fulfill Akio Toyota's directive, a new line of cars has been created. With the exception of the Supra, Toyota is attempting to add excitement to a large portion of its lineup, even in vehicles that are typically thought of as family vans or ride-hailing workhorses. Notably, the automaker is growing the TRD subbrand, which stands for Toyota Racing Development. In the past, Toyota has primarily applied the TRT badge to its pickup vehicles, including the Tacoma, Tundra, and Forerunner SUV. However, Toyota released TRT versions of the Avalon and Camry sedans in 2018. The automotive press was shocked by the action. Despite fierce competition from other automakers and a plethora of new transportation options, actions like these may help drivers remain interested in owning a Toyota for the time being. Toyota has further established itself as one of the largest and most reputable automakers in the world. Using innovation and discipline to outpace competitors in the United States and Europe over the following several decades may reveal whether or not that will still be important. By 2020, Toyota overtook Volkswagen as the world's largest automaker. It sold 9.528 million vehicles globally, despite an 11.3% sales drop due to COVID-19. On April 2, 2020, BYD and Toyota formed BYD Toyota EV Technology Company to create BEVs, battery electric vehicles, that appeal to customers. In March 2021, Toyota, Hino, and Isuzu partnered strategically. Toyota bought 4.6% of Isuzu, which plans to buy Toyota stock for the same amount. The three companies formed Commercial Japan Partnership Technologies Corporation in April to develop fuel cell and electric light vehicles. Toyota owned 80%, Hino and Isuzu 10% each. Toyota announced in April 2021 that it would buy Lyft's self-driving technology unit for $550 million and merge it with its recently formed Woven Planet Holdings automation subsidiary. In December 2021, Toyota announced that it would invest 8 trillion yen, $70 billion at the 2021 currency rate in electric vehicles by 2030, launch 30 EV models globally, and sell 3.5 million EVs by 2030. In a climate of rising global competition, Toyota wants to increase its software engineer intake from 40 to 50 percent of all technical hiring by the second quarter of 2022 to address a transition to case, connected, autonomous, shared, and electric technologies. Toyota ordered several suppliers in 2021 to increase semiconductor inventory from three to five months due to the COVID-19 chip shortage. After the March 11, 2011, earthquake and tsunami in Japan, the just-in-time supply chain, which delivers parts only when needed, was altered, increasing inventories across the purchasing network. In March 2021, Toyota's inventory turnover time was 36.36 days, up 40% in 10 years. Toyota pledged $5.6 billion in electric vehicle battery production in August 2022, and increased investment in its Greensboro, North Carolina plant. Koji Sato became Toyota CEO and president after Akio Toyota retired in January 2023. The company's founder, Rizaburo Toyota, is Akio's great-grandson. Sato ran Lexus, Toyota's luxury division. The new policy takes effect April 1, 2023. In conclusion, it is fair to describe Toyota's business a one-of-a-kind success story. That's all for today. Which Toyota model is your favorite? Tell us in the comments section. We'll be back next week. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.